Thank you, ma. Pastor Nathaniel. common um, penchant or passion for um, improvisational music, jazz music. So, and come on, I mean, I, I didn't watch cartoons, those <laughs> things children watch, I mean, I didn't grow up liking them. Strangely, I would be drawn to um, Bebop, Miles Davis, Duke Ellington, Dizzy Gillespie, all these guys, and I would just listen to, you know, black American jazz music, and then also listen with my dad to highlight music. I come from a, a, a family of music um, lovers. Though they were not professionals, they would serve in church, play in church. So my dad and I would sit down morning to night, apart from playing soccer and maybe some other thing, I'll sit with my dad listening to Jim Rex Lawson, Ian Henshaw, from morning till night, just listening to music. Then I started, you know, with the drums, drummer boy, very young, young boy. And then we got the trumpet for the church. And from the first day, I, I was blowing it. But before then, there was a man who was very close to our family, a police sergeant, you know, you know, didn't go to school, but could read the Bible. Interestingly, he couldn't read any other thing, but could read the Bible. Oh. Supernatural. The first man I saw raise the dead in front of me. Mm. He would limp. I mean, my cousin had, she was living with a, a family friend, a hit hand, she just collapsed and passed out. They rushed her to the house, she was gone. And um, we were crying, my dad was crying. He was an elder in the Apostolic Church. And then she was cold, and then here comes Elder Hediuha, just limping, you know, singing, I know his name, his name is wonderful. Mm. From home, I know his name. Limping, came home and, you know, what him be her name? We said, Eno. Eno, stand up. Eno, stand up. She sneezed back to life. She came back. Mm. So that was the man who, when he comes to pray at home, he'll call my father, E.J. Basi. You see this small boy? I see him for... I mean, like a prophetic dream. I see him for highway. Big boss. They overtake everybody. Watch him, watch him, watch him. And as a small boy, no encounter with God, I knew there was something special about Elder Ihe. I mean, Ihe Diwa. So when he's speaking, I'll go stay very close to him so that his saliva will touch me. Mm. Yes. So he gave those prophetic words, and I began to play the trumpet. Then I joined the Redeemed Evangelical Mission Trem. In, incidentally, today is um, Bishop's um, 75th birthday. So um, I, I, I grew up from the Apostolic Church, then moved to Trem. Then I was you know, ordained in 1998 as a minister. Then I was led to go to the Redeemed Christian Church of God, City of David. Now, while all of this was going on, I began to be involved in mainstream music. Mainstream is I'm doing gigs with the guys. I'm in secular bands. So I worked with um, Ayo Bankole, um, T-Mac, um, Jive Band, um, Steve, um, Steve, Steve Rhodes, as you know, Steve Rhodes Orchestra. Wow. Um, we did sessions. Um, so I, I mean, I was doing pretty much a lot of things and worked with, um, played, I was supposed to travel to France with Asha, you know Asha? Wow. Yeah, so I gave her a few trumpet lessons and all of that stuff. You know, was pretty much doing that and doing church. So I was at the city of David and, and all of these things I'm seeing have connections. So I was doing mainstream because I had the, you know, desire to be, I just wanted to be a touring, very good musician. And, do see you understand this. You just want to be like at the, you know, peak of your, you know, so you practice for hours. So I just wanted to be a good musician, traveling the world with bands, go to Berkeley School. I mean, I applied for Berkeley College Scholarship. We won. You know, I was ready to go to America. And then my pastor, Pastor Esco, would call me to his office. I mean, 
all of this time, I never really had an encounter with God. <clears throat> I said, Nathaniel, do you know that when you play the trumpet, I cry? Mm. Do you know that you are carrying something? Then I, I had a, a typical musician mentality, you know, gigging, traveling, just playing for the money. Then I'll go to the music room, I'll tell my guys. I say, imagine this pastor. Pastor say there's something about me so that I will die in this church. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then your children in America. You say, mm, I'll just make fun of it. Yeah, and he kept saying that. He said, he said, I don't know what is it about this trumpet you are playing, and I'm crying. I'll just think he's trying to I say, Pastor, they why me. <laughs> then one day, um, I mean, a lot of things had passed. The late Stella Obasanjo was going to come to church. And Pastor has said to me, go prepare this song. I mean, of course, our pastor, we had a pastor who, maybe I'll go to that later, who would come for choir practice and listen and say, you know what? I need to, we, we, you need to take us to where we want to go tomorrow. If I don't sense the presence, we're not going home. Anyway, so we did the song. And while I was ministering on stage, I knew that this was what I was meant to do. That wasn't jazz. I knew by the spirit. And then that sent me into a journey, a season. So I went back, told my pastor, and I cut away from every group. All of, I gave up the Berkeley Scholarship. It was so, it was so radical. My elder sister, who led us to Christ, my younger sister called her in Dubai. My sister was the head of a fellowship. She would go to cult boys. Don't see the Lord in seven days. If you don't leave, you will die. She was that fiery. Mm. But I took a radical decision. She had, our, my sister would say, he's giving out his money. Oh, he's doing this. Oh. My sister called me, say, Nat, I've been there before. That thing is not that serious. Calm down. <laughs> Calm down. So I shut down everything, gave myself to praying, and I would just be weeping. I would drive to empty places. Terry McCallum ministering, I will just weep, I'll have encounters, and I'm going to round off soon. And then one night, one, sorry, one day, 12 will be on Miss Street, I'll just ministering unto the Lord. And then my pastor said to me, Nathaniel, by this time I was so close to him, we're relating on spiritual things. He said, Go find out what the trump of God is, 2 Corinthians 15. So I just stood up all through the night, I had a vision, you know ministering and as I ministered there was fires everywhere so I just began to weep all through the night weep all through the night and my father came when my father came why are you weeping when he touched me he started crying mm. and then I, I didn't know why I was crying and then I'll call I'll take my phone I'll call people and they'll hear me crying they'll start crying yeah. and then it continued till the next day then I was worshiping it felt like a blanket rested on my head I took my hands off the keyboard, ran outside. I knew it was a holy feeling. Mm. I didn't know what it was, but I knew it was a holy feeling. Then I was going to church, Bonnie Camp, you know, after CMS. A man who had never called me, I was driving my Kia car, wearing a white shirt. A, a, a relative who, I don't know how he got my number. As I picked up the phone, I picked up the phone. This experience happened some hours before. I was alone in the room. He said, Does see the Lord. The hand of God is upon you from today. Conduct yourself accordingly. Goodbye. Drop the call. Mm. So from then on, I knew that God, God's hands were upon me, and I had to set myself to seeking him. And the rest, they say, is history. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wonderful. So you once played for T-Mac? Oh, yes. I was with T-Mac, Uncle T, for we traveled, Uncle T-Mac, um, would play Fly Robin Fly, um, oh. Ayo Bankole, um, Uncle Steve Roth, orchestra was his band leader, where we just did jazz um, ensembles. And then the French Cultural Center was about to send myself and Asha on a tour to France. And that was when encounter. Wow. So when I had that encounter and I pulled out, the French, the director of French Cultural Center declared me a non personal, you know. Grata, and said I shouldn't come near French. <laughs> so, wow. and my friends, I was a, a, a member of a, a group, um, Spectrum 4, Wally Oni, I or Sri Lanka in the US. We had won the Berkeley Scholarship. We were about to leave our black American manager, a believer. So I said to them, I couldn't come. Wally and the rest of them said, Guy, we are all believers. 
So don't tell me God said. He said, so where are we working for Satan? So, <laughs> but you know, I left, you know, but it was tough. And there was a time where a, a, a journalist, Benson Indonigi, wrote an article. He said, a gift like this is wasting away in a local church mm. and doesn't want to inspire his generation. You know, and of course, um, met him years later and still reaching. So God, God was faithful to make me go through those experiences. Wow. Yes. 